It's time for another Distinguished Achievement Award presentation, and this time it's to Bloomin' Bluegrass Festival. Here to present the Distinguished Achievement Award to Bloomin' Bluegrass Festival is Alan Tompkins. What an honor to be introduced by Mr. Compton and Mr. Newberry. I, I, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but did you pay attention that Mr. Compton has dressed for the occasion this morning? So uh, I want you all to note, note the sport coat over the bibs. I love it. <clears throat> I'm Alan Tompkins of the Bluegrass Heritage Foundation and the Bluegrass Heritage Radio Show. And seriously, I have a question for you. When you think of the times that you've enjoyed the finest music of our genre, the banjo, the fiddle, the harmony vocals, mandolin, guitar, what location or venue comes to mind for you? I'll bet you that it would not be Farmers Branch, Texas, in the heart of the massive Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, the fifth largest media market in the United States. But for tens of thousands of bluegrass fans all around our region, Farmer's Branch is exactly the city that comes to mind. So how did this happen? In early 2010, really it was a chance conversation that I had with the Mayor Pro Tem of the city of Farmer's Branch. They told me about they'd been working hard to develop a wonderful historical park, complete with all the vintage buildings, a railroad depot, a general store, a blacksmith shop, and they really wanted to show it off. Well, the mission of the Bluegrass Heritage Foundation is to evangelize the joy of live bluegrass music to everyone around us. So that conversation brought about a series of meetings and ultimately on October 15th and 16th of 2010, the inaugural Bloomin' Bluegrass Festival. The festival was designed to attract tourism from around, the, around our region, so it featured a lineup of world-class bluegrass artists, including Rhonda Vincent, J.D. Crow, Dan Tominski, Traveling McCurries, The Boxcars, and many more. And we arranged for discounted rooms at a host hotel. It was a whopping $79 a night at that time, which included free breakfast. And we tried to make the festival admission price attractive to get people to show up, so we went with free and we figured that that might help attract people to the event, and it did. We had a great enthusiastic crowd that first year from all around the country, <clears throat> and I even got a call from a woman in Italy. That's Italy, the country. And she called and said that they, were, they wanted to know more about Farmers Branch, Texas, and it turns out they were bluegrass musicians who were planning their wedding and their honeymoon, and so they're gonna have their wedding in Italy and they wanted to come to the festival in Farmer's Branch, Texas for their honeymoon. I explained that normally we think of it the other way around and I would recommend her to reconsider, but they came anyway and uh, they had a great time and uh, we're still friends on Facebook. They've had a child, they stay in touch, so it, it's cool. So the festival's continued for 15 years in a row. We were live and in person uh, even through COVID, we use those social circles and, of course, the lovely masks and everything else, and, uh, and we got it done. One of my greatest moments was having to convince all of our volunteers to stay away from Dell and Jean McCurry, who promptly planted their lawn chairs over at the side of the stage, and I kept saying, okay, whatever you do during COVID, stay away from Dell and Jean. You know, just don't, don't go near them, please. The festival <clears throat> has incorporated a wide range of audience delights over the years, including a petting zoo for the kids, a chili cook-off, fireworks, and we have multiple stages for bands, rides for the kids and their parents, and uh, this was another good one, even an inflatable video screen. Back in 2010 and 2011, some of you may recall the Texas Rangers played in the World Series. Well, J.D. Crow played both years, and so J.D. came up and said, make sure that video screen faces the stage so I can see it, you know, when I'm on stage. And in fact, we put it there, and in fact, he did watch. And uh, that made for some fun moments as he was watching the game and playing. So we continued, uh, we continued the festival with free admission for the first eight years and uh, often pulled more than 10,000 people through the gates for the weekend and uh, have been nominated for the IBMA Bluegrass Event of the Year four times, and thank you all for that. Our main stage lineup, of course, 
reads like a complete who's who of our music, including Lonesome River Band and Traveling McCurry's Rhonda Vincent, seldom seen the Kruger Brothers, of course, Jerry Douglas and the Earls, Ricky Skaggs and Kentucky Thunder, Pete Rowans, Dean Osborne with Bobby Osborne, Balsam Range, Dan Tominski. We had Hot Rise, we had Red Knuckles, Kenny and Amanda Smith, Sierra and Justin, of course, Blue Highway, Donna Ulysses, Sam Bush was there with us. Uh, Molly Tuttle, David Grisman, Susie Boggus, Larry Sparks, Special Consensus, Appalachian Roadshow, uh, Michael Cleveland, Russell Moore, Doyle, uh, Tim O'Brien, and of course the Del McCurry Band, and so many more. Many of you uh, who are in this room are in bands that are represented here, and to all of you, we say thank you for bringing your music and sharing it with us. We really do. We really appreciate it. Bloomin' has been a mainstay for traditional bluegrass music artists for more, and we've had more than 80 bands cross our main stage over the 15 years, and paid out just checks to the bands, more than $1.2 million to those artists over all of these years. And uh, yeah, let's hear it for money. And uh, Bloomin' has created within the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex an enthusiastic audience for bluegrass, where little demand really existed before, we're thrilled that many of our favorite bands, many of you now frequently get booked by other music festivals in the, in the region, performing arts centers and music halls and other venues. And as a side note, the funds raised by the Bluegrass Heritage Foundation from Bloom and Bluegrass, we're so proud to say support our Play It Forward instrument lending program. It's our free instrument lending program for kids. And we have more than 150 instruments out uh, on loan now that just cycle back. Kids use them for a year or two or three and they'll turn them back in and we'll and send them out to somebody else. So more than 150 instruments and hundreds and hundreds of kids who started, many of whom are now uh, banjo champions, guitar champions in various states, and so we're thrilled with that. So today, on behalf of the IBMA, it's my great honor and pleasure to present this Distinguished Achievement Award to the Bloomin' Bluegrass Festival presented by the City of Farmers Branch, Texas and the Bluegrass Heritage Foundation. And here to accept, from the City of Farmers Branch, Texas, we have Mayor Terry Lynn and from the Bluegrass Heritage Foundation board member, Matt Taché. Alan, thank you very much. It's an honor for me to be here to represent the City of Farmers Branch. And on behalf of the residents of our city and our city council, I'd just like to thank the IBMA for this recognition. Um, it takes a lot of folks to put on a good quality event, and so I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the many departments of our city that are involved in, in putting this on, such as our police department, our fire department, public works, and especially our parks and special events departments. And I have uh, two representatives here from, with me from the city, Jessica Alvarado, who's our park superintendent, and Jocelyn Avina, who is our events manager. And hats off to them because they work tirelessly to make this such a quality event for those who come. So I'm sure, give me a show of hands. Anybody been to Farmer's Branch? All right, all right. Well, our next uh, Bluegrass Festival is October 18th and 19th. We've got plenty of room, so if y'all want to come, we would love to have you. But thank you again. Uh, we really appreciate it. Hello again, I'm Matt Teche from the BHF. I've been working for the last 15 years on this, which is almost unbelievable. Started with the very first band that played the very first slot and to stand here today personally is a very full circle for me. But the biggest credit in our organization goes to this man right here, Alan W. Tompkins, because we would not be here today without him and of course the assistance of the City of Farmers Branch over all these years. So thank you so much to the artists that have come. Thank you for everybody, and particularly the Bluegrass fans that make this available. We always talk about, but that's what we're all here for at the end of the day. So thank you very, very much. <laughs> 